So now we're on here. Um, so here, let's see if we could do the, the same question, but in this case, in this case, we're going to use the fundamental counting principle to create how many, to determine how many outfits she can have. So what are the tasks that we need to do or what, what are the tasks she needs to do? Well, she needs to pick a t-shirt, right? Pick a shirt. She has two tasks and then pick pants. Right? Those are the two tasks that she needs to do. She needs to pick a shirt and she needs to pick a pair of pants. So, how many ways can she pick a t-shirt? Three, right? Because there are three. Either red, white, or orange, right? And how many ways can she pick a pair of pants? Two. Because now, because you have either the green or the blue. So, to pick to make this um, possibilities, you get three times two would be six ways. So six ways she can create an outfit. So that would be S equals six. Yeah, yeah. so S is equals to six, right? The number of sample ways. Number of ways together. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at number example number two. So there are two roads to get from Winnipeg to Nipawa. Okay, so Nipawa is a small town. And then four roads from Nipawa to Saskatoon. How many different routes could you take to drive from Winnipeg to Saskatoon? And then you have to drive through Nipawa. Okay, so now it says here, use a graphic organizer to list and count all the possible routes. Okay, so number, we can, from Winnipeg to Nipawa, there are two roads, right? So two roads, let's make two roads. So we can call that um, road one, road two. Okay, so from Winnipeg to Nipawa, there's only two roads you can take. And then from Nipawa to Saskatoon, uh, there are four roads to possibility. So you can go, okay, you can call it three, road four, road five, road six. Hmm? Or you can, yeah, you can, you can say A to B, A to C, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. You mean this? Well, that was like I believe that the first two is like one and two, and then mm -hmm. the next four will be like A and B. So I'd be like one A, one B, one C, A and two A. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. That's okay. Um. Okay. So you can take R one, R three, road one, and road three, right? to list all possible routes. So we did that. Um, and then count all the possibility. How many possibilities are there? Eight. eight. So eight possibilities, right? Eight possibilities. Okay, because you can go R1, R3, R1, R4, R1, R5, R1, R6. And then, or you can take the R2, and then R2, R3, R2, R4, R2, R5, R2, R6. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight possibilities. Now let's do the fundamental counting principles. So how many ways can you go? This is for part B. This is part A, part B. How many ways can you go from two transport? Okay, Winnipeg to Nipawa, and from Nipawa to 
Saskatoon. So it's going to be 2 times 4 would be 8. So 8 ways. Okay, is that good? That's awesome. And that's, that's the end of uh, fundamental counting principles. Now, let's take a look at permutations. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see some, or at least some connections later on too with this. Okay. So permutations, an arrangement, this is a key word, an arrangement, a specific arrangement of a set of objects is called permutation. Okay, an arrangement of a set of objects is called permutation. And we want to know how many ways can we, can we put a set of objects in order So, I'll give you an example. Mm, can I borrow your calculator? Can I borrow your calculator? Okay, we have three different distinct calculators in here, okay? I'm gonna start with off, start off with two. Okay. So, two calculators. How many ways how many ways can I arrange these two calculators? Two. Or like if you're gonna spin them. Yeah, I can arrange it like first, second, right? And then the other way would be like, this is another arrangement, right? So there's, oh no, like we'll put them, oh yeah, side by side. Like we've put them in order in arrangement. I didn't think about that, right? <laughs> um, so it could be. So there's two ways you could arrange these two objects, right? Now, what about? You got three calculators. Okay. Now, I don't know what that is. It's a game. It's a game. Okay. How many ways can we arrange this? And now, with two objects, we can easily arrange them, right? Six. Uh, six, oh, okay. How did we get six? Mm -hmm. So, um, you take a look at this one. We got how many ways? I got these three spaces over here. In the first space, in the first space, how many possibilities can I? Have there. I can have three possibilities. I can put this or this or this, right? Three possibilities. Now, okay, I'm not going to do that one because that's a different question. Uh, okay, so there's the first place, second place, third place. So in this I can have three choices there, right? Three possibilities. Now that I put one calculator there, how many possibilities do I have in here? Now I've got two possibilities left. How many possibilities do I have? Just one possibility, right? So it's gonna be three, okay? I have three calculators, so I have three possibilities that I can put in here. Now that one calculator is laid down, and this one, how many calculators can I have possibility put in there? I only down to two possibilities. Okay, I got one calculator left, one place to, to go, so it's one possibility. So it says here, and the more, the more items there are, like I said, this is not bad right now because pretty easy, right? Smaller numbers, no restrictions. Um, Ashley. I might use it again later. Okay. 
So yeah, somewhat it's pretty easy. So use a graphic organizer to determine the number of ways to arrange the, the word car. So you can treat them as objects, right? Three different objects, three different letters, we're going to arrange them. So we're going to organize it, graphic organizer. A graphic organizer could be something like um, a table, um, what do you call that, that tree diagram. It could also be used as um, uh, you just listing them as a possibility, right? So let's see. How can we do this? Um, we can C A R, right? Okay, what's the other possibility that we can write down? CRA. CRA, right? C R A. What's the other possibility? A R C. A C R. A C R, okay. R C A. Or R A C, and that's, that's basically it. These are the only possibilities that we can have, and this is our sample space, right? Okay, that's our all of our possibility. Now, how can we verify this using fundamental counting principle? Okay, so we got three spaces here. We have to put, pick a letter that can go in here. So, so far we have three possibilities to put there. Okay, so we have three possibilities on the first place. Now that I've chosen one letter in here, I only got, for the next one, I got only two letters. Two possibilities here. And then I've chosen two letters already only got one possibility here. So that's going to be 3 times 2 times 1. That's going to be 6, six ways of doing that. Okay. So, so far so good. Let's take a look at example number 2. Use the fundamental counting principle to calculate the number of four-digit numbers that could be created using three, five, seven, eight, without reusing any of our digits. So we have either three, five, seven, and eight that we're gonna rearrange in here. Okay, so I got four digit. Okay, so how many possibilities can I have in here? Four, possi four possibilities. Right? I can pick a 3, I can pick a 5, I could pick 7, I can pick 8. Okay. Now let's say I've chosen a number and I put it right there. How many possibilities can I have in here? Now I got 3 left, 3 possibilities. I've chosen 2 numbers. How many possibilities can I have in here? It's going to be 2 and then 1. Four times three times two times one. Twelve, twenty-four. Here's twenty-four ways to create a four-digit numbers from these digits. me last time like what is that what is that exclamation mark right on their calculator somebody asked me that I can't remember who um, like what's that so it says here notice the patterns that develop when we use a fundamental counting principle with permutation in the first example the fundamental counting principle produced the multiplication 3 times 2 times 1 and in the second example, we got the 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So this multiplication pattern 
can be represented by a special type of notation called a factorial notation. Okay, so you're going to take that number and then multiply it with the number one less and then another one less, another one less, until you stop where it says one at the end. Okay, so this is uh, very, very useful when we're calculating permutations, especially with large numbers. Okay, so let's give it a try. You know, get used to your calculator. So let's try, try for factorial. So search for your factorial button, the exclamation mark. Everybody got 24? Okay. Now let's see here. So use factorial notation in the operation on your calculator to determine the value of each factorial notation. So 9 factorial, what would that be? Three hundred sixty-two thousand eight hundred and eighty. Okay, awesome. Three, oh, five factorial times three factorial. Seven twenty. Mm -hmm. Right. And that means it's five times four times three times times one. So that's what five factorial is. And then three means three times two times one. Okay, what did you get for the next one? Uh, 516. 5,000, 5, 5,016? 5, yeah, everybody got 5,016. Okay, so so far so good. That's, that's not so bad. Now, question number, well, not number, question next one. It says here without a calculator. Can we simplify this? Because uh, now you're probably thinking, well, now I gotta multiply nine times eight times seven times six times five times. Four. That's gonna be huge, right? So how how can we do this without the calculator? So let's see, nine factorial. We know nine factorial means nine times eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And then 4 factorial will be 4, 3, 2, and 1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. Because there are factors, so you can cancel the 4s, the 3s, the 2s, and the 1s. And then we're left with just this one. 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. We just have to do that. So 5? With a little exclamation? Or no? Yeah, without a calf, yeah, simplify would be. Um, no, no, it can't be 5 factorial because 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 mm. times 1, right? Simplify. Nine times eight times seven times six times five. All we need to do is just simplify it. Okay. Um, let's see this one here. What's 8 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial? Oh, we can combine it. We can figure it out. It says simplify it. Okay, so the 8 factorial would be 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 3 factorial would be 3 times 2 times 1. And then 2 factorial would be 3, uh, sorry, 2 times 1. So the 3, the 2, the 1. 
And then the, f the 4, like the 1 would be just the dividing by 1, but this one could be, would be the same thing as 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 2. Well, let's take a look at this one. This is really interesting because if you type in 102 factorial in our calculator, it's probably going to have like some kind of an error, right? Because it's going to be really, really big. Yeah, they're too big to even calculate it for a calculator. So how can we do this? How can we simplify it? 102 factorial, okay? I'm going to go 102, 101, 100 and then 99 and then dot 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 one and then 100 factorial would be 100 times 99 times 98 okay dot 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 one and you'll probably notice that from a hundred all the way down to 1 will cancel with the one in the denominator because they're going to have a common factor there. So when we get into this, everything below 100, 100 and below will cancel out, right? So this really simplifies to 102 times 101, okay, which is something that we could, we could do, okay? So far so good? So we could just do that if they're like more like if they're that close to one another. So if it's like five divided by four, and you just then this and this. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah, certainly. And we'll see that right away. Okay. So it says here. Uh, determine the number of ways, the number of permutations that you can arrange in each word. So here, there's how many characters, how many objects. You would treat them each character as Right? So, um, how many ways can we arrange the word spice? Well, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 factorial. Okay. So, you can write down 5 factorial or, or yeah, is equal to 120. Or you can use a fundamental counting principles. Okay. I have five five objects that I'm going to, going to rearrange. The first object, I have five possibilities in here. I put one object down. I have four possibilities here. I put one another object right down. I have three possibilities here. And then two times one. Okay. So you can use the five factorial. Okay. Or you can use the fundamental counting principle. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 20 times 6 is 120. 120 ways. Okay, let's take a look at this one here. Nothing is the same, everything is identical. Um, Everything is pretty much all different characters, objects, right? So how many ways can we rearrange this word goldfish? Eight, a lot, a lot. So we're going to call it eight factorial, okay? We can say eight factorial or using the fundamental counting principle for, say, eight times seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. There's many ways that we can arrange this possibility. Lots. I got 40,320 ways or possibilities. Okay. 
Um, we could also use the permutation formula. Now, take a look in your calculator. See if you see the symbol somewhere in your calculator. NPR. You probably have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see NPR? Okay, you're, you're going to have two. There's an NPR and an NCR. We're going to see, we're going to do the NPR today. The permutation arrangements how many ways can we arrange certain things so here so we can use the permutation formula to determine the number of permutation in each word so npr n factorial divided by n minus r factorial so this is what the formula is for the permutation where n is the total number of objects and r is the number of object selected. Use a formula to recalculate the number of permutations. Um, now I'm going to ask you first before you jump into the formula and calculating it. Can you, okay, can you type in what's zero factorial? One. Zero factorial. Okay. Did everybody get one or zero? One. Okay, everybody got one. Okay. Any explanation why that is one? Because there's still one choice to make with the zero? Yeah. There's, um, how many ways can you arrange zero, zero objects? <laughs> one way you can arrange a zero object, well, which is not arranging it, right? Um, so, yeah. So, when you, when you see zero factorial, it's equal to one. Hmm? Uh, zero factorial is how many ways can you arrange n no objects, right? There's only one way you can arrange nothing, which is just one way to arrange nothing is just there's nothing, which is one way to do that. Well, if you have one object to arrange, how can you arrange one object? Well, there's only one way to arrange an object. So, so one factorial is also one. Okay. So now over here, when we say, how many ways can we arrange these five characters, five objects? So you can go five P5, so this is the N, and then the second number is the R, okay? So it's going to be 5 factorial over 5 minus 5 factorial. And then 5 minus 5, that's the one I was kind of talking about, the 0 factorial. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 1, which is 120. Still, okay. Now, how do you use your calculator to do that? Okay. Let's see. Uh, different calculators do different things. So, in my calculator, I go... I type in my 5 first, my N, and then I press this, P, and then I press the R, which is 120. Okay. Okay. Does yours? Yeah. Okay. So give it a try just to get familiar. So type in your N value first, and then your permutation. Um, and then your R. Now you do this one here to calculate using your formula or calculator. In this case, is how many is that? 8. 8 P8. Eight. 8 factorial over 8 minus 8 factorial.
So we're kind of getting exposed to something that we've never really seen before, we've never even probably used before. Uh, let's take a look at this. Yeah, we, we, we will get to that one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So there are, yeah, you will, we're going to see that right away. That's a good question, right? So there are 15 people waiting in line to get to the library. How many ways can these people are arranged? So 15 people are arranged to go to the library. Um, so how can we do that? Okay, I'm not going to go 15 times 14 times right fundamental counting principle although it works probably not going to use that in here so i can go 15 p 15 or i can say 15 factorial that's pretty easy too Okay, and that's huge. Hmm. Yeah, might have to. 1.08 times 10 to the, the 12 ways. Can you imagine that's how many ways you can arrange 15 people lining up? That's a lot of ways. That's a lot of ways, right? Because you just switch two people around. That's a totally different arrangement, right? Okay. Now, I think this is... Uh, I think this is what Bodin was asking earlier. How many ways can six people sit in a row of eight seats um, in a movie? Okay. So there's eight seats in a movie, and there's six people sitting. So how many ways can so you got eight seats hmm? Twenty thousand one hundred sixty ways. Okay. I know. Like I, because I just thought maybe it was in like six seats, but eight people. So you flipped it around, but it comes out like zero. Yeah. So that means if you have six seats, eight people, you, you can't possibly make that arrangement, right? Because you're gonna have so is that like just so that R and five will have to be equal to or less than or correct, right. So this is your N and then this is your R. So the R has to be less than your N value for it to work. Or equal to. Or equal to, yeah. Equal to or less than N. Time? Okay, I think we could. Yeah, we could go as much as go as far as we can. Um, how many ways can you select three letters and arrange those three letters from the word saving? The word saving has how many characters? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six objects. Okay, six objects. But what we're really doing is we're not arranging all six. We're going to just select three and then arrange those three that we selected. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be six, P, three. You're going to have from six objects, you're going to pick three and then you're going to arrange those three objects. And that's going to give us 120.
So you can show it like that. How would you show that as a fundamental counting principle? So this is a permutation way. So this is using permutation. But how can we show the same thing using fundamental counting principle? Um, 6 divided by, no, we, we have to come up with 120. So you got, here, you got, remember, you're going to have three things, three tasks to do. I got to pick something for this place. How many ways can I pick something in here? Six, right? How many ways can I pick something from there? Six. I've picked one letter. How many ways can I do this task. The second letter, five. Okay, I put one letter there. How many ways can I, now that I've picked two letters, I put them over there, how many ways can I pick and put a number there for? So six times five, 30 times four is 120. So you can use, okay, for this question, you can use a permutation, from permutation strategy, or you can you can use a fundamental counting principle strategy. Is that good? This one here, okay, here's the other, yeah, yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's basically using this. So, let's use the formula, okay? So, here's the other one. 6P3, and if we use the formula, it's going to be 6 factorial divided by 6 minus 3 factorial. So, that's... N E R. That's N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. Yeah. So six factorial over three factorial. So that one. That's why it works. So we can use this way. You can use a calculator to do this way. If this is the type of question that says, how many ways can you do this without a calculator? You can use fundamental counting principle. You can use a permutation formula. This one, calculator. That's a calculator way. Okay, is that good? Okay. Probably gonna have to do example eight. We'll take a quick break. Example number eight. How many ways can a press President, vice president, and a treasurer could be selected from the class of 25 students. So let's see if we can do that using three different strategies. How can we write that as any strategy? 25P3, and then of course we can type that into our calculator. using a calculator. What's the other way? 25 times 24 times 23. Okay, so we can say 25 D3 using a factorial, so 25 factorial over 25 minus 3 factorial. That's going to be 25 times 24 times 23. We're going to get
So this is using your calculator, using your formula, typing it out. And what's the fundamental accounting principle? Okay, I have a president here. I have a vice president there. And I have a treasurer there. So how many ways can I pick a president? Thank you. 